In this video we'll take a look at what are called the power functions and these are all pol these are all polynomial functions that we're going to take a look at. Uh, the they all have a domain of the entire set of real numbers. Um, there's no value you cannot put in place of x in their equations. We're not going to take a look at the equations too much in this page, but um, they, the domain being all real numbers means that they go forever to the left and forever to the right with no restrictions. Uh, the most simple polynomial function is the linear function. And uh, although this isn't pure uh, pure power function, uh, y equals x plus 1 is an example of a linear polynomial function, and it's a straight line. And notice that, and re remember the quadrants look like this. The quadrants are labeled usually with Roman numerals. Uh, this is quadrant number 1 here, and this is quadrant 2, and then 3 is down here, and then this is quadrant 4, and I need a I at the beginning. So the quadrants go clockwise in uh, in this direction. Actually, that's counterclockwise, I guess, isn't it? So the linear function, and you always read this from left to right across the graph, it, it's, its end behavior is for, it goes from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. And that's true of any actual odd power function. Now, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. The domain is the entire set of real numbers. Uh, odd polynomial functions, and these three are all examples of odd polynomial functions. The range is also the entire set of real numbers, which means that they go up forever with no limit and down forever with no limit whatsoever. Now, uh, another example of an odd uh, polynomial function or power function is y equals x cubed. This is the graph of y equals x cubed. And uh, it also goes, it starts in quadrant 3 and goes to quadrant 1. So that's its end behavior. Uh, this is the graph of y equals x to the fifth. Notice what happens is it kind of gets flatter in the middle, but it has the same general shape as the cubic function here. And again, it starts in quadrant 3 and ends in quadrant 1. Now, if there's a reflection in the x-axis, so for example, if we take y equals x cubed and multiply the equation by negative 1, y equals negative x cubed flips upside down. So it goes like this. So uh, in that case, if the leading coefficient is negative, instead of going from quadrant 3 to 1, it'll actually go from quadrant 2 to 4. So its end behavior would be 2 to 4. And the same thing would tr be true if we uh, graph y equals negative x to the fifth, it would go from quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. Now on the right hand side are graphs of some of the even polynomial functions. This is y equals x squared, y equals x to the fourth, y equals x to the power of six. And they have some, they, they still have a domain of the entire set of real numbers. They go forever to the left and the right. There's no value of x they're not defined for. But there is a minimum point, or there could be a maximum point if they actually open down instead of up. And so since there's some minimum point, the range is always going to be the set of real numbers such that y is either less than or equal to some number, I'll call it n, or greater than or equal to some number n. So for example, for the basic parabola y equals x squared, the range is the entire set of real numbers greater than or equal to zero. That's the lowest y value there of zero, and every other y value would be above zero. And so the end behavior for this even function is it goes from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. And the same thing for y equals x to the fourth, quadrant 2 to quadrant 1, quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. Now if we take uh, the parabola and multiply it by negative 1, graph y equals negative x squared, that reflects it in the uh, x-axis and opens down instead. So its end behavior would be quadrant 3 to quadrant 4. It goes from this quadrant to this quadrant. And a similar thing is true if we were to graph y equals negative x to 6, it goes from quadrant 3 to quadrant 4. So that's two different kinds of end behavior for uh, the different power functions, whether they're odd or even. And again, the odd or even has to do all with the, uh, uh, the uh, highest exponent, whether it's uh, an even number or an odd number. Now, power functions are symmetrical about uh, even power functions are symmetrical about the uh, y-axis. So this, uh, either of these graphs, if we reflect them in the y-axis, they are symmetrical, they look the same. And uh, the odd power functions have point symmetry. Now, uh, if I, I, I vertically trans, <coughs> excuse me, 
translated this line uh, up one unit. So, but if it was actually going through the uh, origin, it would have point symmetry just like these do. Point sy symmetry, and there's this, the point of symmetry at the origin there, means that if I were to take this uh, graph and rotate it 180 degrees, this part would line up with this part and then this part would rotate up here and line up exactly with the part in quadrant one and so it's said to have point symmetry or if you rotate about that point or this point right here it, 180 degrees uh, exactly half a revolution it would look exactly the same on the second page so uh, this is the definition of a power function it's a function of the form ax to the power of n where a is some real number and the exponent would be a natural number. So you don't get a fractional exponent or like a rational number in the exponent. Um, it would only be a whole number exponent and actually not even a negative. So for example, 3x squared. Combining two or more power functions, we get what's called a polynomial function. I mentioned those in the last page. And in general, polynomial functions have this form. Now this looks kind of long and complicated, but uh, what a, a sub n, x to the power of n, represents is it's the highest power term. And it's because n is bigger than n minus 1 or n minus 2, etc. And so you write them from the highest power of x to the lowest. And there's an example in the, the example below. Actually, b is probably the best example of what that looks like. So a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1. So this is just listing the successive terms from highest power to lowest right down to if there's a constant in the end. So this would be the linear term a1x. This would be the quadratic term because x is squared, etc. And we're asked in the example which of the following are polynomial functions. And you're asked to name the degree and the leading coefficient. Now in A here, because the exponent is only uh, in the, uh, sorry, the x is only in the exponent here, this is actually an exponential term, not a polynomial term. In polynomials, the uh, x is not in the exponent. The x is the base of the power. So we would just say this is not a polynomial function. It's actually an exponential function. For b, this is an example of a polynomial function with four terms. Uh, the highest power uh, term is the 5x to the fourth. So the leading uh, deg the degree is 4, because that's the highest power of x. And the uh, leading coefficient is this 5 here. Because the leading coefficient is positive, it would uh, have this general shape. If I draw a little graph over here. x here, y here. So if you remember from the previous page, this kind of looks like a parabola that's kind of flat at the bottom. And because the leading coefficient is positive, then it would have some general shape, something like this. And it would go from quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. That would be its end behavior. Now it might be shifted a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left, a little bit up or down, but that has that's the general shape of it. In C, uh, w x of x equals negative 3 cos 2 x plus 45 plus 1. This cosine means this is actually a trigonometric function. It is not a polynomial function. And D, this is a f this, although it's just x cubed, it's actually a power function. It is a simple version of a polynomial function. Now, the degree would be 3, and the leading coefficient is 1, because there's actually a 1 here beside the x cubed. And that's the end of the power part of this uh, lesson. Now, if, if you're taking the advanced functions course and using the uh, McGraw-Hill-Ryerson textbook, there uh, in the textbook, there's another section on uh, set builder notation and interval notation. And uh, I've broken this lesson into two parts. So I, I do have a lesson for that post on YouTube. So if you're looking for that, you can search for that uh, part as well. But this is the end of this part of the lesson.